welcome to Sip Juice and Color History. Yay! What are you gonna sip on today? Well, I don't know where you are. I am coming today from Florida and it is hot. Anybody else hot? Let me see. I know we got folks coming to from Georgia. Looks like Louisiana and Texas are in the house. Some other folks from Florida and Tennessee, California, and all the way up in New York. Yay! And some others. I can't tell where everybody is coming from, but ooh, it's out of Florida. So today we are going to sip on something very, very cool. And you can see my t-shirt. Is that a clue to what we're gonna talk about today? It is. But today we are going to make, I'm going to sip on a chunky milkshake. Most of the time when we drink milkshakes, it's a combination of some sort of ice cream and some type of milk and it's blended together. But today we're gonna make it by hand. We're not gonna use any tools or equipment. So if you want to try this, it should be kind of easier for you to make on your own. You don't have to get mom or dad or, or an adult to help you with it. Maybe. You could probably make it on your own. It's going to be very easy to make. Let me show you what we're going to be making this with today. Okay, so you can see we have some almond milk and I got a kind that I like. This one is flavored with coconut and vanilla. Ooh, tasty. Coconut and almonds. Yeah, coconut and almonds. Doesn't that sound delicious? And one of my favorite, all time favorite things is anything chocolate. So I went with a chocolate ice cream. And I'm gonna make it in a nice cup because I like that this has a handle so I can sip it. See, that's the good thing about when you're home, you can use the things that you like to make things. So it's very simple. All we have to do is open our milk and you can use whatever type of milk you like. I'm using an almond, it's not really milk, it's an almond beverage, but people say milk. And we're gonna pour, pour some of that into our cup. Close that back up. And then our ice cream, I actually let the ice cream sit out a little so that it can get soft. You know, when your ice cream is frozen, it's very, very hard. So this one is a little soft now. And I'm just gonna dump a scoop or two. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so delicious. Um, and we adults are always worried about our calories. This is gonna be a ton of calories but I bet it's gonna be delicious. But a lot of you kids are, maybe you're not eating enough as mom and dad say that you should, or maybe you're not getting enough, a lot of milk. So this is a great way to get in your milk or your almond drink. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Let's see how it is. It's delicious. It's not overly sweet and that's important. We don't wanna to have too much sugar, but this is absolutely delicious. And the main thing, it's very, very, very cold on this hot Florida day. <laughs> and anyway, you can see my shirt. It has the Buffalo Soldiers. And that's where our story is going to come from today, the untold stories of the Buffalo Soldier, Black History and Activity Book. So let's go ahead and get started with that. But first, let's see what our artist Daquan has to say. Hey, I'm Daquan, and today we're going to be painting the Buffalo Soldiers. Um, this one in particular is a picture of them leading some pioneers down a trail in the Great Plains. So, in order to paint this one, well, I'm actually gonna be painting this one. I also have clothes, 
and all pastels. But yes, I am going to be painting. It's going to be watercolor. And I'm going to be using my marker paints too. They're my favorite. But to start, we're going to start at the top and work our way all the way down to the bottom. And finish with the people who are the stars of the show, to be honest. So that makes sense. Okay. Like I said, to begin, we're going to start with the sky. So you know, we got to get the clues. Grab your book. It's time to start reading the introduction. Okay. Have you ever even heard of the Buffalo Soldiers? Who are they? And what makes them so unique? Why is their story important? Where did they work? When did they live? What exactly did they do? Let's read and learn a little bit. First, I'm going to read the introduction to give you a little bit of overall history about the Buffalo Soldiers. They were the Ninth Cavalry with the motto, we can, we will. And they were the 10th Cavalry with the motto, ready and forward. But let's take a little time out and get to our word for the day, which is Calvary, C-A-V-A-L-R-Y. It means a group of soldiers that are mounted. What were these soldiers mounted on? Today's army soldiers might be mounted on to a tank or tanker. But these soldiers were mounted on horses. That meant they did most of their work or some of their work from a horse. They traveled, they lived, and they worked day in and day out with their horse. Can you imagine having your horse to work with and becoming sort of a friend and companion? with your hearts. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, let's keep going. Abraham Lincoln was the president of the United States from 1861 to 1865 and led the country through the Civil War. Over 180,000 Black people fought bravely to help the Union Army win the Civil War. Black people have fought in wars and battles throughout the United States history and helped shape the nation into what it is today. In 1866, after the U.S. Civil War had ended, laws were passed that allowed Black citizens to join the army. This was the first time that black citizens were allowed to serve in the military when the nation was not fighting in a war. During that time, the army was segregated. Black soldiers served separately from other service members. Those black troops were called the United States Colored Troops. The 9th and 10th Cavalry and the 24th and 25th Infantry formed from the 38th, 39th, 40th, and 41st Infantry of the U.S. Colored Troops became affectionately known as Buffalo Soldiers. Being in the, in the army was very hard. Buffalo soldiers stayed in the army longer than all the other cavalry units. Buffalo soldiers served in many battles and wars, and many of them received the Medal of Honor for their service, dedication, and bravery. Most of their work was on the Great Plains where Native Americans lived. Some of their work brought them 
in conflict with some Native Americans and some of their work brought them to the aid of some Native Americans. We celebrate that today, Black people and Native Americans generally walk in unity and peace. Isn't that beautiful? Did you know any of that history already? Have you heard any stories about Abraham Lincoln? And did you study his work in school, his work as a president? Well, remember, when you talk about Abraham Lincoln as the president, you can tie that in with the stories of the Buffalo Soldiers because that's where it started. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into some art. All pastels and all pastels, but yes, I am gonna be paint. It's gonna be watercolor. And I'm gonna be using my marker paints too. They're my favorite. But to start, we're gonna start at the top and work our way all the way down to the bottom. I'm finished with the people. Who are the stars of the show, to be honest, so that makes sense. Okay, like I said, to begin, we're going to start with the sky. So, you know, we got to get the blues. And, you know, let's just dive into it. And one thing I like to do with my paint markers is layer them, especially when it comes to stuff like this guy, because if you put a little bit of white on top of the blue, not only does it like blend the colors out, but it makes it look more natural. Basically, that's the that's what we're gonna be doing with this guy, you know, just getting it nice and blue. I think I'm going to put a lot of my blue at the top and kind of blend it out to the white where it gets to the bottom, because I do feel like that's gonna give it a really pretty effect. So. You can do that if you want, and you can blend this too if you want, because you can try this with regular colors or um, other kind of regular paint. Or pencil colors too, really anything, just blending the things on the top, especially white to lighten it up. Sometimes I like to keep in mind what color is the lightest because layering a lighter color on top of a darker color is going to have a different effect than laying a darker color on top of a lighter color, you know what I mean? So keep that in mind. But basically what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this part is filling in the rest of the sky and doing that little thing I said about the blue at the top and the lighter blue at the bottom. So I was able to get the colors for the sky kind of established, but now to bring it all together, I'm going to use my watercolor. The tricky thing about this is it can get kind of messy, so be mindful of that. Okay, so now that this guy is basically done, I might come back to that later, maybe not, we'll see. I'm gonna move on to the mountains. And for the mountains, I want to do, I think maybe orangey, purple looking mountains, which I know might sound a little weird, but stick with me and I think it's gonna come out cool. So I'm gonna bring in my paint pants again and start off doing the top of the mountains, the light colors, and then work my way down to the darker colors. So orange, the red, and it should create a pretty cool effect. So let's try that. I'm gonna use a little side of it. You know how you maybe use like a crayon to kind of outline the top of the mountains, go along the peaks. Basically, everywhere the light would hit the top of the mountain, it would be the, you know, light yellow parts, and then anywhere that would be the shadow, for example. So, the light hits this first, and it's kind of lighter, versus this, where the shadow hits it and it's darker. That's basically what you're going to be thinking about when we do anything that has to do with highlights and shadows and the paint. So, next is the orange. And I try to remember, even though I'm being generous with the paint markers, 
I'm going to move it around a little bit with the watercolor. So I do give it a little bit of space to like mix and mingle when I come back in and spread it with the water. So that's why I'm doing these little tips with the orange. I'm not really going in as much as I did with the yellow. But now we move on to the red. And once again, I'm keeping it a little bit subtle. Not doing too much. Just kind of filling in some spots and going around the general area. Thinking about outlining. It's the same way I outline the clouds a little. And then the tops of the mountains. Okay. I also want to do purple, but I think I'm going to save my oil pastel. Because then I can get even more on the lines and with the details and everything. And that's a good way to really emphasize the shadows, being able to get it as detailed as possible. Okay, now, like I said, I'm gonna go in and do the little bitty detail work with this oil pastel. It's kind of like a lavender color, which I think is gonna look pretty stinking cool next to the. Um, warms in the mountains and then right smack dab in the middle of the cools in the sky okay here we go and what this really does is smooth out the border of the little horizon line because that'll make it look a little bit more natural if the colors are kind of fading into each other as opposed to harsh lines, because that's not something that happens in nature. So this will smooth things out and it'll also be a cool color change. And although I wouldn't say purple is one of my favorite colors, it is one of my favorite names for a color. I don't know, something about purple is so funny. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> Purple. Anyway, let's get to it. For the grass part, I'm going to start with yellow to outline the trail. Because, you know, it's been stepped on a little bit more, so it's not as vibrant. But when I start to stretch out to the sides of the painting, I'm going to use uh, greens. But like I said before, we start with the lighter colors first, so I'm going to start with the yellow. And as usual, it does make things easier if you outline certain parts first. It's definitely not a rule you have to use when you color, but it does make the coloring look a little neater, if that's what you're going for. Sometimes the right coloring pages are just asking to be colored, but not this one. Okay, so now we're going to, from the yellow, move our way out and add some more greens. This one I wanted to make sure I kept vibrant because although the Great Plains are kind of yellowy brown, I want this to be a pretty bright, bold painting. So I'm going to make some of the colors a little bit more amped up than they might have been in real life. but. That's what color is about, you know? Amping it up. And the reason I'm doing this little circle thing is because I'm gonna come back in and watercolor it. And one of the reasons I like to watercolor natural things is because it helps to, it looks more natural that way than like maybe regular coloring or regular painting because it kind of spreads out in a more organic way. So. When I come back in with the watercolor, I'm gonna spread it out and dibble it and dabble it so that it looks a little bit more like real grass. And then after that, I'm gonna come in with my oil pastel and make real grass lines. That's what's gonna bring it to life, I think. So This story is written in a rhyming form, sort of like a poem. 
So I want you to pay careful attention and see if you can pick up a rhyming pattern. At some point, I hope that you write a poem or some sort of story that rhymes and share it with us. Pioneers and settlers moved from the north, south, and east and headed west. They rode across the western frontier, the Great Plains by horse-drawn wagons. The frontier covered many states, a large stretch of land that was miles and miles wide. They packed everything they had on their covered wagons, their clothes, their foods, their animals, and if they had furniture, they packed that too. There were no planes to fly, trains to catch, and absolutely no cars to ride. The trip may have taken not hours or days, but weeks or months. And their hope all along the way was that they were on the right path to improve their lives and that they had not been misguided. Those journeys were long and difficult and filled with dangers throughout. I imagine sometimes the pioneers and settlers wish they could turn around, go back, or just hide. Buffalo soldiers helped those pioneers and settlers stay safe on their journey. They protected them both day, day and night. So they caught up with them on horseback and rode right alongside. That's what the Buffalo soldiers did. Isn't that awesome to provide a way to protect people as they travel? And that's why we salute them. Their work was brave, their work was pioneering, and their work was magnificent. Buffalo Soldiers, we salute them. So, before I do that, I have to get started with the uh, darker orange. Green. <laughs> Oh yeah. Now we're gonna do the actual path. And to do this, we're gonna use a couple of different types of browns. It's actually gonna get pretty brownish around around this part of the painting because the people are gonna have browns in them, the clothes are gonna have browns, the horses are gonna be brown, the road's gonna be brown. And while this might be a lot of brown, I, don't worry because browns can be cool too, you know, especially the way you use them. Okay, let's go. So to do that, I'm going to once again, try to outline it as best as possible with the browns. Now, the good thing about this particular part is it's a dirt, rocky road. So if you do little like dots and circles, it's gonna make more sense than any other part of the painting, to be honest. And even that little bit of outlining kind of really shows you where the path is and it brings them out. Look at that. It's like they could come right out of the painting. So next, now that we've kind of established where the browns are gonna go, I'm gonna come back in with my watercolor and color the inside of the dotted lines, or the rocky lines, or the rocky dotted circle lines, whatever you use to make your lines. Okay, so I've watercolored and filled in the trail after I've done the brown from the rocks. And now that I've done that, one trick I like to do, especially when it comes to making shadows of certain things, is I use the excess watercolor paint on my paintbrush. And then I kind of outline certain things like this. And I think it makes them look a little bit more three dimensional. And they pop out. So I have some brown on our paintbrush. Let's move on to the next browns we're gonna use, which is mostly gonna be on the horses. One thing I like to do when I'm painting horses is do different combinations. Like if I do their body a light brown, I might do their 
tail and mane a dark brown, or maybe I'll do the body white and make the tail and mane black or blonde or brown, you know? You can really mix and match the colors when you get there. Even if you don't want to do brown, you could do lots of other colors and make the horses, manes, and tails different than their bodies are different altogether. This is going to be fun because there's a lot of horses that you could paint different colors, if that's the case. Um, but I'm going to try to do as many brown, horse, tail, mane combinations as I can. And I might have to put some whites and blacks in there just to help my odds. But... That's the next step. So let's get started. Okay, so I went in and I tried to make each horse as unique as possible. But next we're gonna move on to the final part, which is the people. So for that, we're gonna be using mostly pencil colors because that's where I'm going to be doing the most details. Now we're going to work our way up, remembering to do the highlights and shadows. And one thing I also like to keep in mind when I'm doing skin tones is when it's a lighter skin tone, sometimes you can see the reds in a person's cheek. So I use pinks and light yellows and cream colors for those parts. So that's what I'm going to be doing with some of the pioneers. And then for the Buffalo Soldiers themselves, we're going to use a lot of cool brown colors and doing the um, shadows under their chins to make them stand out and look cool. And like, you see that? Like that. Um, and their brows and stuff like that, or their noses. Um, and then we're going to move on to everyone's clothes. We're going to have fun with it for sure. So for the pioneers, I'm gonna do light blues and greens. And for the Buffalo Soldiers in their cool uniforms, I'm gonna do like royal blues and like yellows. So let's get started with that. I also keep in mind when doing clothes where they're gonna like bunch up, it's probably a place where there's gonna be a lot more highlights and shadows. But since it's so small, you could probably just stick to the shadows and do the outline rule with a darker color that's a little bit darker than the color you're using for the base. So since I'm using light blue right now, I'm probably gonna go with a little bit darker blue and outline some of the places where the shadows would be because of the creases. Now I'm gonna move on to the small details like hair and more pebbles where the rocks should go. One thing I, that y'all remember with the hair is since these are black dudes like me, when I do the coloring of the hair, usually browns and, and blacks, I do little squiggles to emphasize the curl patterns in our hair. And when I come down and do the rocks, um, sometimes I do like a gritty little ch -ch 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 because rocks are kind of rocky, you know, and make it look even more textured and even more real. So it just depends on how much time you're willing to put into it and how much care and work you want to be shown in your final results. One more thing I want to do to bring it out is more lines for the grass. And I think the more lines and the more layers I'm going to do, the more realistic the grass is going to look. And I think that'll help my picture too. So a couple things, the hair, maybe some more details for the clothes and the horses. Definitely the grass, you know, just a couple touch-ups here and there. And then we're going to be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, you Did you already know that the Buffalo Soldiers escorted the pioneers and settlers and helped to keep them safe as they traveled in harsh drawn covered wagons moving from the north and the east mainly and settling out west. Wow. Well, now you know. So let's not forget our black 
history drama. I'm by myself today. I don't have anyone to help me with the drama, but in our black history drama time, we take the story and the information that we learn and we change it into our own little drama by adding some nonfiction or adding some things as we imagine them to be to the actual facts. What are the facts? We know that the Buffalo soldiers helped pioneers and settlers as they traveled along trails. We know that they provided protection. We know that the settlers faced many dangers and fears, and it was a very scary and difficult time. We knew that they took everything that they had with them because it was a long journey and they didn't know if they'd ever be able to travel back to wherever they came from. So in my drama, I'm going to pretend that I'm a mother and the wagon train has stopped for a break. Maybe it's nighttime and travel was primarily during the day. So the wagon trains were stopping, the horses had to be fed, the horses had to get water, and maybe a camp was built. And during those moments, maybe the children had an opportunity to run around and play. So I'm gonna pretend to be a mom talking to my children. I'm going to pretend that I had a son named James. James, how are you doing? I know this has been a long ride and we have a long way to go, but isn't it beautiful? Look at the mountain, James. We've never seen mountains like this before. Aren't they beautiful? James, do you think that one day you'll be able to climb a mountain? Just think, James, of all the fun you'll have. I'm so glad that we're taking this trip. It's hard, but I think things will get better for our family. I love you, James. Sleep well, but have a little fun for now. Run around, let your energy out, and have a little fun. Okay, that's my Black History drama. What are you gonna do for Black History drama? Can you think of something from the story and put together a little drama, maybe with your brothers or sisters, maybe with your friends, maybe with mom or dad. But don't forget, if you don't have anyone to do it with, you can do just what I did and do it alone. Okay, thanks for coming and see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah.